words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, this is the beginning of a new season in the church. We start over again with our Bible readings, beginning with the first book of the Bible, Genesis. But we didn't go all the way back to chapter 1, but we started with chapter 2, verse 4. Now some scholars say that this is a second creation story. No, that doesn't mean that the earth was created twice, but it just means that perhaps the story was told by a different group of people, and both stories are included in the book of Genesis. So in our story today, we learn that God is an artist, a potter, who forms a human being out of the dust of the earth. Now one of my teachers called this new creature Dusty. And he asked us to use our imagination and try to see God as working hard over this potter's wheel with dirty hands and knees with clay caked under his divine fingernails, carefully shaping bits of moist earth into the first human. Then God fills Dusty with the breath of life, that gift of the Holy Spirit, which God breathed into each one of us at the time of our birth. So in this story, God creates the human first and then puts forms a garden, and then puts Dusty right in the middle of it. And God gives him a job to do. He is to till and keep the garden. In other words, Dusty is the chair of the trustees. And he's not only to guard the property, but to work it. He's to make it better than when he received it from the hand of God. Well, the next thing God realizes is that, is that it's not good for Dusty to be alone. And so God decides to make a companion who is like him. <coughs> so God first tries to see if any of the creatures that he's already made will do. So God proudly shows each animal to the man. But for some reason, Dusty doesn't find the lion or the parrot or the shark something he wants to snuggle up to when the day is done. <coughs> so God creates a woman. And when Dusty sees her, he breaks into joyous song. God finally gets it right. He says, this at last is my bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. So God has created a beautiful couple in a beautiful garden. And now they can live happily ever after. <coughs> well, that was the plan. But sin quickly enters the picture. And that brokenness continues to plague human beings to this day. But the fact remains that God says it's not good for us to be alone and that God gives us work to do. So our Bible study this week focuses on the fact that God continues to challenge us to show up and to do the work God calls us to do. The author, the Reverend James Harnish, says that we are created to be in community with one another. No one is called to walk alone. He says there is no such thing as a solo Christian. We need the encouragement, guidance, wisdom, and accountability of other disciples. He says that there's no such thing as a self-made person. I am who I am because you are who you are. And then he tells a story about a man who came to his office because he found out he had cancer. And he had not been to church for almost 30 years, but he knew he needed some spiritual support. And he didn't really know where to turn. 
So in his office, he noticed a woman who was kind and gracious, and he knew that she always went to a disciple Bible study group every week at her church. So he thought maybe her church would be a good place to go for some help. So his question for Reverend Harnish was, could he get to know Christ without being involved in a church? Well, Reverend Harnish said that he believed Jesus is risen and present in the world, so he supposed it would be possible to run into Jesus just about anywhere, and that he could get to know the story of Jesus by reading his Bible. But he also told him that he knew of no way to experience the fullness of Christ's presence without being a part of a Christian community in which to worship and grow as a disciple of Jesus Christ. So to Reverend Harnish's great surprise, the man showed up for worship that Sunday, and then he showed up for the men's group Monday morning. And he said he had already read the Gospels, and he was excited about this Jesus. So he was baptized, surrounded by his new friends from the men's group. And they surrounded him with prayer, emails, and friendship as he went through the surgery and chemotherapy. And he described the, the amazing peace that filled his life as he went through the treatments. And he has continued to grow and now helps lead the men's group in Bible study. Well, Reverend Harnish believes that it would be possible that this man would have gotten to know Christ without the church, but he wouldn't want to bet on it. It mattered that he showed up. And it mattered that the presence of the congregation made a real and lasting difference in his life. So how often has the presence of someone else made a difference in your life? Most of the time, the person doesn't even have to say a word. Just knowing they cared enough to show up helps us know that we're not alone. And all of this made me wonder, and you're invited to <coughs> wonder with me. How would showing up at this church make a difference in someone's life? So think about that. If someone was having a crisis in their life and decided to muster up the courage to walk into this church for worship, how would that make a difference in their life? Would they be met with a few polite hellos and then left to go home to their loneliness and despair? Who among you do you think would introduce yourself to them and ask their name? Would anyone follow up with a phone call or a visit? Our society is very individualistic. We give prizes for people who can tough it out in the wilderness alone and survive. And sometimes we don't have a lot of sympathy for someone who finds themselves having a hard time and maybe just needs a helping hand. The image that's been haunting me all week is that teenage girl who was running with her family from their war-ravaged country of Syria. They had nowhere to go. And on the news the other night, this young girl was crying because she couldn't understand why no one wanted them. So we're reminded in our scripture lesson today about the work of a God who loves his creation. And we're reminded that we belong to God and to each other. And God intends for us to be bothered when harm is done to creation, or when we forget that all people are related, that we come from each other. 
that we share the same flesh and blood. God intends for us to weep over the fact that this world is broken and at the same time remember our call to be stewards of all that God has given us, especially of one another. <coughs> Someone has said that you can tell that you are doing what God created you to do when you find that the place where you are planted is better than when you than when you got there. We need one another. We need a person to tell when we find that special someone to spend the rest of our life with. We need a person to call to explain with joy just how perfect our first grandchild is. We need to be able to share our great fear when we receive bad news about our health. We need someone to call when we experience the devastating loss of a loved one. So in the Disciples Path Bible study book, the author writes, there are times when I come to worship to affirm the faith that I hold, but there are other times when I come to worship so that the faith the church affirms can hold me. There are times when I come to sing my song of hope, but there are other times when I need the church to sing that song for me. There are times when I am, I am present with my small group in order to encourage someone else. And there are times when I need to be present so they can encourage me. And so on this Sunday, we read of the beautiful garden God created for all of us in which to live. We read of God's promise that we all belong to God and to one another. Unfortunately, because of our brokenness, this promise and beauty is not what the world often experiences but it still stands as a promise. So let us rededicate ourselves to this promise. Let us trust in God to continue to make this, this promise a reality. Let us continue to seek to make this world a better place in which to live. Amen. I invite us to join together in our prayer of confession. Let us pray. From our very beginnings, we left, when left to our own devices, humans are prone to confounding choices. We confess our sins before God and one another. great creator of us all. We have heard what you asked of us. Live in this place. Care for it. Eat your fill. Do not be alone. And yet we choose our own way. Close our eyes to the gifts around us and cut ourselves off from our neighbors. We take giant steps away from you and baby steps toward grace when it should be the other way around. Forgive us, Lord. Amen. God provides for us with a generous hand. The seeds of grace exist even before we make our turn back toward God. 
Christ says to us, 